Apostle to the Corinthians. Brethren, you know that when you were heathens, you went to dumb idols according as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, saith anathema to Jesus. And no man can say the Lord Jesus, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of graces, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God, who worketh all in all. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man unto profit. To one indeed by the Spirit is given the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith in the same Spirit, to another the grace of healing in one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of speeches. But all these things one and the same Spirit worketh, dividing to every one according as he will. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Satan. At that time Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves as just and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee standing prayed thus with himself, O God, I give thee thanks that thou, I am not as the rest of men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, as also is this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not so much as lift up his eyes towards heaven, but struck his breast, saying, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I say to you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, because every one that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today is the tenth Sunday after Pentecost. This Holy Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, because of our fallen human nature, tainted as it is by original sin, we must get down on our knees and beg God for the grace of humility to squelch our sinful pride, as did the publican in today's Gospel. Without this grace from God, we will never be able to overcome the vice of pride, which truly is the root of all sin, and which all of us too readily fall into. So primarily, reliance on God's grace is necessary for this. But also on our part, we must use that grace which God wants to give us. We need to humble ourselves, willfully crushing our pride and ego. And this is done by frequently pondering upon our weaknesses, our blindness, our vileness, our half-heartedness, our inconsistency in our duties toward God of serving Him with all our mind, heart, strength, and will. Think of the times you have easily fallen into sensuality and being more attached to creatures than to God. Let the memory of the sins of your past life remain ever imprinted on your mind, not for guilt, but to thank God for his mercy and to remember what we are capable of if we do not rely on God's grace. That we are nothing without God sustaining us with his holy grace. These are little exercises to help us grow in humility. Little exercises, but very challenging and difficult for us. 
rather than puffing up ourselves and thinking we are so great, we should be weeping over our deplorable state and each admit in humility, I am one of the most unworthy of sinners. St. Augustine preached, there is no sin in the world which one man has fallen into, which another may not commit, should the hand which created man fail to uphold him. The best to best practice the virtue of humility and meekness, abandon yourself to God as a child casts itself without reserve into the arms of its loving father. And let God do with you whatever he pleases without asking for your permission. St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta would not only say to give God permission, but also accept what he gives and give what he takes with a big smile. In other words, accept everything that comes from him with joyfulness, confidence, and reverence. To act otherwise would be to distrust God and to show one's ingratitude toward him like a spoiled child. Saint Paul, who was wrapped up into the third heaven, regarded himself as the least of the apostles and even unworthy to be named an apostle. Saint Bernard says that our Blessed Mother, more than any other creature, humbled herself, and that being the greatest of all beings, she, through the most profound abyss of her humility, made herself the least. And for that very reason, Our Lady received the plentitude of grace and became the worthy mother of God. So abandon yourself to her immaculate heart and beseech her, who is the queen of all saints, to obtain for you that virtue which was so dear to her. St. Augustine teaches us, in order to become great, it is necessary to begin by being little. He also is quoted as saying, it was pride that changed angels into devils. It is humility that makes men as angels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.